Hey, how you guys doing? This is Abong. I had a quick message today. I was just thinking about this every single morning when I get up uh, to get ready for going into the office or wherever I'm, how I start my day is I just I just reflect. And for those who don't know, I get these emails from people all over the world, literally either through my YouTube videos or people find me directly or they tweet me or they uh, direct message me. And they ask me all these questions a lot. Some of my most popular videos uh, besides business are ones about dealing with anxiety, uh, dealing with uh, loss, dealing with, uh, you know, overcoming, you know, negative thoughts, things like that. And these are all demons that a lot of people face. And they're even things that I've experienced and I've, I've had as challenges in the past. I mean, so much so that I used to, um, in order to go to work, I used to have to take, um, you know, an anti-anxiety medication because I was just so stressed. I thought about the same thing over and over again, even as long as, even when I was a kid, I used to stress all the time. And and so today I wanted to share another message going forward. You know, one of my, again, one of my most popular videos is uh, overcoming anxiety and how to deal with the haters and stuff like that. And so I want to kind of put all that together and, and I want to ask you to make a declaration, um, basically a declaration of independence. If you're familiar with the U.S., the United States of America, their declaration of independence is in 1776 uh, to declare independence from tyranny and from the crown. And, and so for you today, I want you to de declare independence from the tyranny that we put ourselves into. There's something called learned helplessness that in some cases, in many cases, after, after a while, we become our own jailers. We'll put ourselves in our, a self-imposed prison, right? The prison of worry, regret, sadness, uh, melancholy, uh, being around the wrong people. And you, you, I, can't, I can't share with you how many times I get messages from people who talk about their family and this loved one or this sibling or this cousin or whatever is negative and how do I deal with them? And they, they, nobody, most people don't like the answers I give them. And so I'm going to share with you a few things as to how I overcome these things. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to die. And that's actually one of the, the, the most powerful things if used correctly, fear and a hope are very are very powerful if you use them adequately and correctly. So one of the things I think about when I'm in a situation where I'm worried or stressed is I ask myself one question, what's the worst that could happen? What is the absolute worst that could happen? You know, someone gets mad, a client gets mad, a customer gets mad, uh, someone you're dating, you know, gets mad, doesn't like you. What's the worst that could happen? They leave you, right? That's not, obviously that's not what you want. But the thing about fear and anxiety and, and, and worry that a lot of people have is the, what the brain does is it'll fill in the blanks. Okay. If you, if, absent of information, when you don't have the right information or enough information, enough stable data, what ends up happening is the brain will fill in the blanks. And so very few people are strong enough to control the blur, the brain from filling in the blanks. So you have to almost go over the over, you know, virtually very extreme in order to stop your brain from filling in the blanks adequately. And enough of this kind of activity and training eventually stops you from going to the worst case scenario in a way that that harms you. So a lot of times ask yourself how many how many times this has happened to you where you're thinking of the worst case scenario and something that's happening. Or if I don't do this, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And nothing ever happens. Right. Nothing ever close to what you thought would happen happens. And again, worst case scenario, you die. But in that case, you have nothing, nothing you can do about it. So I started, and, and this is kind of a, a philosophy of stoicism. This is, I believe in stoicism. That's how I govern my life. That's how I, I, I tend to stay calm in a lot of difficult situations dealing with people. This is why I don't react emotionally, why I try not to react emotionally. And if I do react emotionally, I feel disappointed in myself. I don't need outside disappointment. The reason why I, I remain stoic and that's kind of where the term someone who has a stoic face uh, remains from is is being in the moment and realizing that whatever I'm dealing with or working on or whatever the problem is the worst case scenario is almost never as bad as we think it is and one of the things that I want to ask you is to is to free yourself from an independence from your self tyranny from self imprisonment uh, from negative emotions and 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 negative thoughts is you got to think about the people who are around you. If you're in a relationship that's not serving you, if you're spending time with people that's not that not, that doesn't serve you to be a better person, you need to take a look in the mirror and take control of what you can do. I'm not asking you to leave your marriages and your relationships and your family, but you have to figure out a way where you protect your sanity, where your sanity becomes more important than anything else. Because again, if you go nuts, if you go crazy, 
and do something that's out of out of character or a mistake, it doesn't matter if they're family or not because they're not going to be able to help you while you're sitting behind bars. So the goal is how can I remove myself from situations emotionally, physically, in many cases, and sometimes spiritually that don't serve me. I want to spend my time is valuable and your time is valuable and the way you look at the world should be valuable. So every single time you spend with somebody is time you can never get back. Get back. If I lose $1,000 on an investment or some business or something like that or $100,000, I could I can most likely make that back. Because I know better now. What I can never get back is the time that I wasted with somebody calling me with gossip or talking to somebody who's negative, who complains all the time. You know, my steak was raw or was bleeding or it wasn't good or the service was horrible or this guy's an asshole. I don't care. I don't care the majority of the time when people complain. I actually start to I have a physical cringing. I, I get silent when people complain. Because I, I, I keep thinking that I want to I wanna yell at this person and tell them to stop. But I don't because I just hope it stops. But I'm doing better now with sharing that sharing that, that message. So when people get online and you see them on your Facebook feed complaining or your YouTube complaining. And, and I don't mean complaining is not, being angry is not complaining. Complaining is complaining about something that they're not doing anything about. It's kind of what I mean. I want to I wanna implore you. You know, the whole point was just supposed to be a short video. But I want to implore you to, to literally declare independence from self-imposed prisons, self-imposed... Uh, negative emotions, self-imposed negative people. I want you to enjoy your life because it's short. But, as Seneca said, your life is long enough if you know what to do with it and if you don't waste it. One of the other things I would ask you to do is read that book, Man's, Man's uh, Search for Meaning, by Viktor Frankl. He's a, a survivor at Auschwitz. I think it was Auschwitz, but um, he's a concentration camp. And he talked about, he was a psychotherapist, but while he was in camp, in that prison, in that uh, um, death camp, he was literally, he implored a variety of different techniques to think about how to get through it. And none of you who are watching my videos are in that such same situation. So um, there's something you can learn from everybody. Uh, you can also read Sto uh, Seneca's uh, On the Shortness of Life, Marcus, Aurelius, uh, Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, Ryan Holiday's um, The Daily Stoic, all tremendous works of, works of art. Um, follow people who are into Stoicism and learn from them. And it doesn't change your, your religious philosophy, but this is a way of staying now in the present and not being aspirational in your thoughts. And it keeps you grounded and reminds you that life is short but long enough if you know how to use it and you don't waste it like a lot of other people do. Peace.